Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. On today's episode, we're going to be making a 10 minute tutorial where we're diving back into creating a simple yet stunning enemy drop effect using the powerful Niagara system. This versatile effect can be used in a variety of scenarios from enemy drops to chest looting or item pickups. Unlike previous tutorials where we use spring forces, this time we'll be using a point attraction. This approach will attract individual particles, giving our effect a more natural look and feel. The best part of this is it's highly customizable. It allows you to tailor it to the unique needs of your individual project. If you're interested in getting your hands on the project files for this tutorial and many others, remember they're available for download on my Patreon. Your support there helps me continue making these tutorials. Remember to hit the like button if you find this tutorial useful and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's right click add a Niagara system. I'm going to do an empty and just going to name this drop effects. Let's go ahead and open that up. Inside of here, um, the first thing I want to do is this emitter state. I'm going to set this to self, uh, set it to once, and I want to give this a five second uh, loop duration. Let's add a spawn burst here and I'm going to set this to 50, but that uh, will be whatever, however many you want to spawn on yours. In the initialized particle, I'm going to do a direct set and I want these particles to lay on the ground for a while. So I'm going to do 20 seconds for the color mode. I'm going to do a direct set. I want these to be uh, zero, something like this, just to get this like blue color. For the sprite size mode, I'm going to do a, a uniform and make it five. The next thing I want to do is do an add velocity. Make sure you fix your issues. Uh, for the velocity, I'm going to do a random range vector. And I want these um, to go from negative 100 to negative 100. And for the Z, I want it to only move up. So I'm going to do 300 here and then 100, 100, and I want to do like 550 here just to get that nice explosion look. In the particle update, let's add a, a scale sprite size. I want this to do this uh, drop off here. Let's do a drag, and I'm just gonna leave that at one for now. I want to do a gravity force to bring these back down. I don't want it to be earth gravity, so I'm going to do negative 500 instead, make it uh, fall a little slower. Let's add a curl noise. And I want to jump this to maybe like 200. Um, I want these to just lay on the ground without falling through, so I'm going to add a collision. The next thing, let's add a scale color. On the alpha, I want to do a float from curve and just leave it as it is there. The next thing I want to do is add our uh, point attraction force. This point attraction force, I'm going to set to 200, 200, and 0 0.7. For the attractor position, this is what I'm going to set to my actor location. So I need to do a new or a user parameter. And I'm going to rename this to actor location. And then that's good there. Let's go ahead. I also want these to die off whenever they um, come into contact with our uh, player. So I'm going to do a kill particles and volume, set the radius to something like 60. Uh, for the volume origin, I'm going to change this to convert position to vector. And then in the um, input position, we're going to drag our actor location into that. And then we'll set that actor location inside of our um, blueprint for this effect. Let's rename this emitter to orb. I'm going to right click, add a new emitter for the tail. Um, so let's Rename this to tail. In the tail for the emitter state, 
I'm going to set this to self and I'm just going to leave that on infinite. I'm going to do a spawn um, particles from other emitter. Make sure you fix issues on both of these. Back in the emitter update on the spawn particles from other emitter, let's uh, select orb here. And we want the spawn rate to be 250 and 250. For the initialized particle here, let's do a uh, random. And I'm going to do from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. For color mode, I'm going to do a direct set. I want to do the same ratio as the other one, but um, lower. So instead of 130, I'm going to do 13 and 50. So it's not as bright. For the random si or the sprite size mode, let's do a uh, random uniform. And I want to do from 2 to 10. Um, in the particle update, let's do a scale sprite size. For the scale sprite size, I want the linear ramp down, but I'm going to right click about in the middle and add a key. And I'm actually going to um, make this fade even quicker here. So moving that right there. Let's do a drag here. Again, just going to leave that at one for now, but you can always adjust it. Let's add a curl noise. And I'm going to set this to 500 to get some good random uh, noise. And I'm um, sorry, the scale sprite size, this didn't drop the color off, it drops the size even smaller. I'm going to do a scale uh, color here. And I'm going to do that same thing. So float from curve, let's add a key here and just make it fade even quicker. On my scale sprite size, I don't want to do this. So um, let's see if I can delete that key. And that looks good. Um, one more thing I want to do on the orb real quick is I want to add a light renderer to get that um, same color glow here. So I'm going to do 130 and 500 for the color. This goes red, green, blue here. So let's uh, compile and save that down. I know that I kind of sped through that. Uh, for the sake of trying to keep this under 10 minutes and I didn't compile or anything so we weren't able to really see our um, spawns there. Uh, back in your content folder, let's right click, add a blueprint, and this is going to be an actor. And just going to call this uh, BP drop effects. Let's open that up. On default scene route, I'm going to add a Niagara particle system. And then with that highlighted over in the details panel, let's um, add that system in here to the asset. I'm going to leave auto activate on. In the event graph, um, the way I want to display this is doing a set timer by function name. Let's loop it, do every five seconds. And the function name is going to be, let's do a custom event here. And I want to name this spawn. And then make sure you type spawn or whatever you use there. Inside the spawn, I'm going to grab my Niagara system, uh, pull it out. And then I'm just going to say set active. Connect that up. And I'm just going to click uh, both of these. Check both of these new active and reset. So every five seconds, it'll spawn a new uh, system. I'm going to do an event tick here. And this is where I'm going to set that actor's location. So I'm going to grab this Niagara system again. And I'm going to say set Niagara um, variable. And I want to get the uh, vector 3 option here. Let's connect that. This uh, variable name here is this variable name, so actor location. And you can uh, copy that display name and paste it in or you can just come over and type it in. And then off this, I need to get our player's uh, location. So I'm gonna say get player character. Off of this, I'm gonna say get world location and I want it of the mesh. And I know that this, is, this mesh 
Um, it's going to be at the very bottom of the mesh, this world location. So I'm going to do an offset here. I'm going to say add. And I want to offset this by 100 in the Z direction, which should be about half of our uh, character's height. Uh, we may need to adjust it. Go ahead and compile and save that. Then if I drag this out into the world, we see our particles. And whenever I get within a distance, it attracts some, but not all of them. So let's drag a few out here. Again, this is highly customizable. Um, change it however you want. Maybe you don't want it to spawn randomly, but you can have it drop and uh, activate that effect uh, when something breaks or an enemy dies or all kinds of ways to use this. So that's gonna do it for this quick 10 minute tutorial. If you learned anything from this or enjoyed the video, please subscribe and like the video. Make sure you turn on notification bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. As always, happy developing, and I'll see you in the next one.